Throughout the season of Advent, leading up to the celebration of Christmas, I drew our attention to various prophecies that God had given hundreds, even thousands of years before his coming. And to celebrate their fulfillment, we have his nativity, his birth on Christmas. And today, the celebration of the Epiphany is about how that has been revealed to the whole world. And so we find in our readings today a number of these other prophecies that are fulfilled in this occurrence. So in the gospel, we find the continuation of the nativity account that we had last week. Magi from the east arrive searching for the newborn king of the Jews. And scripture doesn't say exactly who these magi were, though tradition has passed on to us names Casper, Melchior, Balthazar. Now, the Jewish philosopher Philo, he writes of an Eastern school of magi, the scientists and astronomers of the day, and perhaps the three magi were of this school. And maybe this school was descendant from Daniel, who was a Jew that was taken off into exile during the time of the Babylonians taken off into the east where he became an advisor, a wise man, to King Nebuchadnezzar there. And so maybe these magi that have come from the east had some kind of connection to a Jewish background and then would have known and cared about the biblical prophecies of the Messiah. Then they would have known the vision of Daniel that would set the time of the coming of the Messiah during their own. Knowing the Hebrew Scriptures, they would have assumed that God could communicate through astronomical events. For it says, for example, in Psalm 19, that the heavens proclaim the glory of God. And so they would have also known the prophecy of Balaam from the book of Numbers, that a star will advance from Jacob and a scepter, a king, will rise from Israel. So they would have been expecting a star to mark the coming of a Jewish king. And whatever the precise nature was of the star that they saw, it caused them to leave their home in the east and to travel to Israel. And so now we hear in the gospel tonight how how these impressive strangers and their entourage arrive into the streets of Jerusalem and they head to the palace the obvious place to search for a king. And the chief priests and and the scribes, they cite the prophet Micah in the gospel as the place where the Messiah was prophesied to be born. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And so it's there in Bethlehem that the Magi, still following the star, find the Christ child. And their arrival represents the revelation of God now to every nation. As we sang in the prophetic prayer in Psalm 72, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings will pay him homage All nations will serve him. And again, we heard in the first reading tonight from the prophet Isaiah that nations will walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Caravans of camels shall fill you and dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of God. So these prophecies speak of how The Messiah, the king, will be the king of all the nations. So, with the coming of Jesus now, not only for the Jewish people, but for all people throughout the world who did not know God, now through Jesus, will be able to come to know him. And in fact, we ourselves would not know of God, would not know Jesus had it not been passed down through the centuries to us culture to culture, until now. If we look at those prophecies, according to them, gifts were to be given. And Isaiah says, specifically, gold and frankincense. 
which is indeed what we read in the gospel uh, among the gifts that the Magi brought. Gold, which was a proper gift for a king, and frankincense, which was a symbol of divinity. So those two gifts together are saying that this child is both a king and he is also God at the same time. And that's what we know Jesus to be. He's God made flesh. But you might notice in there he doesn't mention myrrh. Isaiah doesn't. Well, don't worry. He actually does in a kind of different way. But we have to kind of know what myrrh is. If we look ahead in the Gospels to when Jesus is crucified and then placed in the tomb, it says that his body was anointed with myrrh. And that's what myrrh was used for. Myrrh is a gift, represents death. And so in other places, in the prophets, like Isaiah, it does say that the Messiah would die. For example, Isaiah says that he was cut off from the land of the living and struck down for the sins of his people. He was given a grave among the wicked, a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong. And so, We find other places in Isaiah that that gives other details of how the Messiah, the king, would offer his life for our sins. I won't go into those prophecies now. We actually hear them during Holy Week. So gold, frankincense, and myrrh tell us that this child that they've come to see is a king who is God and who will offer his life. For us, He has come not just for the Jewish nation alone, but for all the nations of the world. By his blood, he's purchased for God all of us from every tribe and tongue, every people and nation. Our God has come for each of us, especially for those most in need. As, uh, as the psalm says today, he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor, and the lives of the poor he shall save. So today, just like the Magi, we want to bring our most precious gifts to Jesus, our Savior. Because he's come for you. So give your whole self back to him. So place your needs, your joys, your your fears, your sorrows. Place everything going on in your life here before the Lord. Here at Mass, that's what we do every time we celebrate. So we place our whole lives here upon the altar and unite them with Jesus in giving ourselves to God the Father. And then Jesus, who has come into our world, gives us nothing less than himself back. So come, let us adore him.